So again, today we're going to work on the payroll program. I promised you we'd do that, that uh, calculator. We will. In fact, I want to show you. I did do it. All right, so, whoops. Remember this? That was the picture I had on the wall yesterday. All right, so I can come in here, 34, 23. I can add, subtract, multiply, divide, do a modulo, clear. And if I put nothing in there and I attempt, I get error messages. See that? So all that stuff works, but I'm thinking that since what I'm going to show you today is basically what you're going to have on your next test, it would make more sense to do this. All right? So I've got just what you've got. There's payroll more. In fact, there's payroll more zipped. I'm going to grab the one that's unzipped and just throw it away. And now I'm going to grab this zipped one, and I'm going to unzip it. Again, it has two almost empty JavaScript files in it. That said, when I say almost empty, all of the documentation is in there. So if you look up on the screen here, you've got two HTML files that we'll go through in a minute. And these are the JavaScript files. We're going we're gonna to fill in both of these today. All right. I'm still going to see if you know, I'll get it done, for lack of better words, kind of as quick as I can because I do want to give you some time to sit and work on homework. opening it like this, but it is. I think I unzipped it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, replace That's fine. Got that, and there's that. All right. So, when you look here under what's in payroll more, there are two HTML files, and if I look at those, it's not, again, just a button, okay? One will call payroll 4, one is called payroll 2.3. Don't worry about what that means. You'll see it in a minute because that's what's in here. Now, if it turns out, I'm, I'm not saying you are or are not, if it turns out that you are struggling with this stuff, especially when you're doing the homework, Look on the screen here. All right. We're going to add an if statement to check for overtime, and we're going to add looping. That's what we're going to put in here. This is all the pseudocode for it. So when you're taking your next test, if you're like, oh, God, I don't even know where to start, go back and look at some of these. Sometimes you can even grab that code and just change variable names and stuff. All right. That's not really a great practice to do, but I, I, you know, I don't want it where you turn in an empty test. All right, so let's look at this. We're going to fill this in. So the first thing that I'm going to do in here is I'm going to add a couple constants. If you remember, we're going to do it pretty much like we did it before, all right? And then we're going to take it and modularize it by building functions. But one thing we didn't do before is everybody got paid straight time. We didn't do any overtime. We're going to put overtime in right now. So we'll put another if check in there, all right? So I know we've looked at some of this, but we're going to just keep going anyway. So if you want to follow me, great. If you don't, that's your call. But this is what I'm giving you. So I'm going to have this. Again, I know we looked at some of this. Max non-OT, and I'm going to set that equal to 40. Most hours you can work with no OT. No. But I, my, my question for you is, does that make sense? We're saying that if you work 40 or less hours, you get no overtime. If you work more than 40 hours, so even if you work 41 hours, you get one hour of overtime. All right? And our overtime rate is equal to... 1.5. So in other words, you get paid 
time and one half for overtime. Do both those make sense? Yes? No. Okay. You don't have to put this in, but I'll say here, declare and initialize constants. All right? Those are the things in the program that are not going to change. Now I'm going to put in a bunch of variables. Three, six, seven, I don't know how many. There'll probably be about 10 of them, so you know. All right, var, first name, var, last name, You can put them in singles. That that won't that won't hurt anything. Except, well, it it shouldn't. How's that? You'll find out. That that's the best I can tell you. I know that in other languages, that if you put in single quote single quote, you have to have a blank space in here. I don't think JavaScript is like that though. This, these will be zero. Sorry. Hours work, zero. Hourly rate, zero. We're also going to do this. We're going to put it into a loop so we can keep going. And let's suppose, let's suppose for a second you've got three employees. We're going to add up all of the employees and all of the gross pays. Does that make sense? Those are called accumulators. So we're going to create a couple of accumulators here.
Now, if we want to, we can do this. I don't have it in here, but if we want to, one thing that we could do is we could add the most, you know, a maximum number of hours, a minimum number of hours, a maximum pay rate, and a minimum pay rate. Are you with me on that? Didn't you do that on the BMI program? Yes? Max weight, min weight, max height, min height. So we could do that here. All right? I mean, if you want, we can add those here. But that's just four more constants that we add. You know, so it would be max hours, min hours, max rate, min rate. All right? I guess we could add them. So const max hours. We'll just say again, we did this before. 84 maximum hours an employee can work. We'll have min hours, and that'll be zero, which is the minimum number of hours an employee can work. <clears throat> I'm just going to make this up. I'm just going to say the, the maximum pay for an employee is $100 an hour. You don't like that, you can change it to something else. Is there anything that's there in that mess that doesn't make sense to you? I'm saying, is there anything based on the names that are in there? Okay, I put comments in, but if you didn't have the comments that are there, would you still be able to understand what those things mean? Part of what my charge is to do with you guys is to teach you good programming habits. I, I will tell you this. I'll try to make it short and sweet. You may not believe me, but you would have had to have seen it. One of the first programs when I was a professional programmer that I was asked to take a look at Literally, all of the variable names were A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Literally, with no documentation. None. So what happened when they got to Z? Then they went to A, 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 B, A, C. You, know what I'm, you understand what I'm saying? And imagine thousands of lines of code like that where you had to figure out what the variables meant. They weren't all like that, but there were a, most of them were like that. This, at least, you should be able to take a look at and figure out what's happening. Believe it or not, when we start going, this isn't going to take real long. It may seem like it with all these variables. It won't. We'll finish this, this iteration, and we'll take a break. Then we'll go back and rewrite this so that it'll use functions. All right? We should still hopefully do, be done before 10. So you'll have a good, basically just about two hours that you can work on homework and the like. Does everybody have these done? Here, these. I'm just typing in the comments. Okay, but you've got all the variables and stuff. I mean, you can put that in at any time. Okay? There. 
I, I'll print you out each a copy of that. All right. So we're in Maine. We created one, two, three, four, five, six constants and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven variables. All right. So does this make sense? Look at the comment. Do you get that now? This is the same thing as saying this. If the other one has got you have to type more. So if this makes more sense to you than this, here, use the one that's more typing. I'm trying to save you some keystrokes. And I will tell you that in the biz, so to speak, no one does it like this. No one. All right. So as long as I want to keep going, this will be, you know, basically this will be the loop that I'll be going through. All right. Where's your ending bracket? The... It's way down here. Well, maybe I even lost it. But for now, at least, I'll put it way, way down there. All right. So prompt for inputs is what I'm going to do. First name equal prompt. Enter first name. You can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can, if you want to, you can put in your own first name. You can leave it blank. It doesn't really matter. Last name. Hours worked. In fact, let's put we'll put a blank space after each one of these so it looks a little bit nicer. This will be a parse float with a prompt. Enter hours worked. Let's just suppose that most people at this place work 40 hours a week. Are you with me? We're just going to suppose that. Right now, we're going to put in some more code here, but I just want to get these things in here. And we're going to suppose that most people working there make, let's say, twelve fifty an hour. Again, doesn't have to be that. That's just those are just numbers I just made up. All right. Now, when you look up on the screen here, what I want you to realize is, as of right now, we're doing no validation. I think you'd agree with that. Okay. Why? Why? Who cares? Back in the olden days, like in the 1990s and the 2000s, when people would go and fill out forms, you know, you want to register for this thing, fill out this form. Put in your first name. Put in your last name. You know, all that good stuff. What used to be is people didn't check things like this, so people would hit the space bar for their first name and the space bar for their last name, and the system would take it. So your, your name would be blank space, blank space, which when you look at it, that's kind of stupid, right? All right. Not only that, what if you did this? What if I put in blank space, blank space, blank space, Jeff, blank space, blank space, blank space, blank space. Now you say, well, why would you do that? I don't know. But if I did that, would you agree looking up on the screen here, if I had this, Really what I want is that. Would you agree with that? All right. So JavaScript, like most 
programming languages, and I'm going to show you this right now. All right. So I'm coming right back to it. Has a built in function, all right, that's called, that's a string function called trim. What trim is designed to do is to get rid of any leading spaces and any trailing spaces. Did you hear me? But if I, for some reason, if I put in my first name as JE space FF, I don't know why I do that, but if I did, it won't remove spaces in the middle of a string, but it'll remove beginning spaces and ending spaces. So this is what I want to do. All right. So what I'm going to do is after I do this, I'm going to say the first name equals first name dot trim. Okay? In other words, if, if a person has just hit the space bar, I'm going to make sure, all right, if a person hit the space bar, I'm going to make sure that I get rid of any of those leading thing, leading spaces. Okay, that's fine. But what if the person, what if it was still empty? Are you with me? What if you still put in something that's empty? Well, we're going to have a lot of while loops in here. So this is going to say while first name equal equal double quote double quote. All right. And I'm going to put a comment here that says checking for empty first name. So if that's the case, I'm just going to give them an alert, say first name cannot be empty re-enter and I'm gonna grab these two lines again from right here and I'm gonna put them right here look up on the screen if you would what I want you to get out of this look where I've got in gray when I get to that statement underneath the gray, when I get to the statement underneath the gray, there has to be something put in for the first name. Could I even check more? Of course. Right now, if I put 23 in there, a 2 and a 3, it thinks that's my first name. Well, that's stupid. doesn't matter. All I'm checking for is a blank first name. Does all that make sense? All right. Then... I'm going to grab this same check and I'm going to make my changes but now I want to check for last name all right now so now I'm checking for an empty last name So what do we say here, Scott? So what I'm trying to get out of this with you, if you look up on the screen here, with all this code that we put in right there, we are making sure that the user entered something for their first name and that the user entered something for their last name. Okay? Now, we're not going to get we're not going to do this on this example but what if we were asking for their email address i'm asking you this question you might laugh it's it's, it's sort of funny but not really what if, if what if uh, i asked you to put in your email address okay and you typed in screw you at screw you dot com or, or or screw you at gmail dot com do you think that if you put that in most of the time for a place that was asked you for an email address they would take it they would wouldn't they all they're looking for is, do you have something at something dot, you know, whatever. So in the same way, all we're checking for is we're trying to make sure 
that the first name is an empty and the last name is an empty. Do both those make sense? All right. Everybody has that? No. What don't you have? So you're on the last name? Yeah. All right. So now we want to make checks. We want to validate our hours worked. That makes sense? So what are the things that could be? Can't be empty. Can't be non-numeric. Can't be less than, for hours worked, zero. Can't be more than 84. That makes sense? We've got to make those checks. And you already saw this, that if we break that rule, we're going to ask them to do it again. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say while is NAN while is NAN hours worked. All right, and I'm just going to put each one of them on its own line. You don't have to do that. Or hours worked is less than min hours. Or hours worked is greater than max hours. Again, we're going to do just like we just talked about. Come on, get over there. Okay, let's fix that. We're going to give them an alert, and we're going to ask them to do it again. So take a look at that. We are making sure that the user entered a value that was between 0 and 84. That's what this does. If it's not between 0 and 84, we say naughty, do it again. We still do it, we say naughty, do it again. And we keep doing that. Cheat, grab all this, paste it in here. Now I got to make changes to hourly rate. Min rate. Okay. Better hurry, I'm not stopping. All right. Right here? Gotcha. Thank you. That's part of the problems that you can run into by doing too much copy and paste, I guess. But now, I mean, look at this. We've got almost 150 lines of code already. 
All right, that's the bad thing, so to speak. The good news is when you get down to right here, you know that all of those four inputs are, are correct, right? First name, last name, hours worked, hourly rate. You know they're all valid. Are you all caught up with this? Again, it's not my intention to lose people and see how, you know, etc. I don't want to do that, but you know as well as I do that it's real easy to lose a whole class period. I don't want to do that. I want to give you guys, I want to make sure I keep giving you guys some time every period work on this stuff. We still have to get that test done today, too. So, you don't have to put this in, but you can if you want to. Once we get here, we have values for first name and last name. Also, we have in range values for hours worked and hourly rate. All right? So we know that those are valid. Okay? So, who cares? Well, I'm going to tell you that if, if you're an employee for my company and I'm doing a payroll program, I don't care right now about FICA and taxes and I don't care about your social security number. What I'm saying is I now have enough information and if you put in Keegan and you put in Young and you put in 40 hours and you put in $15 an hour, that I know enough now that... I can figure out how much money you're owed. Okay? All right. So that's what we did up here. Is that's we just we we okay, so prompt for inputs, yeah. I'm gonna say here validate first name. Uh, space cannot be blank. Validate last name, cannot be blank. All right, so I did the last name. Validate hours worked. Cannot be blank. Non-numeric. <clears throat> Less than zero or greater than 84. And I did the same thing for the hour ups. Yeah, that, that's a wrong comment. That should be hourly rate. All right. And again, I would strongly suggest that if you're writing new code, let's just assume you become a programmer. I don't even care what the language is. I would assume I would I would recommend <clears throat> that when you're writing code for the first time like this, you put in a lot of documentation. If anything, you overly document. Does that make sense? And I would also suggest that I, I gave you, you've got everything right there. I would also suggest that if you are going to be working on someone else's code, you're, you're, a, you're doing maintenance work, anything you put in, you put in comments. All right. I mean, that's all I can do is suggest it. You're going to do it or not do it. All right, so we've got down to here. So once we get down to this point, we know we've got a valid employee, for lack of better words. 
So first thing I'm going to do is I want, remember we had this look up on the screen here. Remember we had, so we've now done, we've now used all of this stuff. Okay, we haven't used the min and max. Don't worry about that yet. We use the first name, the last name, the hours worked, and the hourly rate. So we've used all that. Now we're going to do the gross pay, but we now have an employee. Did you hear me? We now have an employee. So first thing I want to do is I want to do this. Plus, plus. Is that what we call it? It was toad employees, I think so. Yep. Plus, plus, toad employees. What does that mean? That's another, that's a shortcut. So that's the same as tote employees equal tote employees plus one. It's a shortcut. Look on the screen. I'd rather type in those 10 characters than those 20 characters. If you disagree, type them in as the 20 characters. All right. Now that I've done that and I've added one, now I'm ready to figure out gross pay. So I'm going to type in calculate gross pay. Now, don't type in this, but look on the screen. If I said this, I could do that. But then no one would get overtime. Does that make sense? And if I worked 100 hours in a week, well, 80, 84 hours in a week, and I was entitled to 44 hours of overtime and I didn't get it, I'll be peeved. All right? So we are going to use this. Well, that's better than saying pissed. All right? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say if hours worked, now look on the screen. I'm, not, I'm going to change this. But if I say less than or equal to 40, then I want to do this. I'm going to change this. Don't I, have a, don't I have something already that I used for 40? Up here. That was 40. Max non-OT. So I'm going to change that to this. So... Calculate gross pay for anyone for employee working less than or equal to 40 hours. So I'm going to put an else in here. Can one of you tell me who is that employee? Who is that employee? If this is for people who don't get overtime, what is this for? People who do get overtime. So we know, we know that they're going to make at least this much, but they're going to make at least hours worked. I'm sorry. They're going to make at least this 40 times their rate. Would you agree with that? They're going to make at least that. So we have two different things. Look up on the screen here. We created way, way up here regular hours and OT hours. See that? Okay. We did this up earlier. Regular hours and OT hours. So they're regular hours. We don't really even have to do this. But it equals max non-OT. Their regular hours is 40. Their OT hours... That is their hours worked minus max non-OT. I asked you how many hours did you work last week, Maya, and you say 50. All right? Look on the screen here. So your regular hours are 40, so that is this. Your overtime hours are how many you work? 50 minus that max, which is 10. Do both those make sense? 
That's basically the logic that gets put into a payroll program. That is it. As far as figuring out overtime. Now, can there be more? Yeah, if it's a holiday, how do you pay people? We're not, we're not going to handle that. All right? So now we're able to say this. The gross pay equals their regular hours. In fact, I'm going to put it in parens just to be sure. Their regular hours times their hourly pay or hourly rate, I guess it is. All right. Plus their OT hours times their hourly rate, all right, times the OT rate. Let's put a parenthesis around the whole thing. So this, if the person happened to work 50 hours, their regular hours are 40, their overtime are 50 minus 40, which is 10. So their gross is their 40 hours times their regular rate plus those 10 overtime hours times their hourly rate times 1.5. Does that make sense? All right. So you remember up here, we said we got a, we got a new employee right there. See that? Now... We've got a gross pay. Okay. Oops. All right. And you go, wait a minute, that's not right. No, it isn't right. That's just adding a gross pay. What do we want to add? I'm asking you this. You got part of it there. We don't want to add one to the gross pay. We want to do this. Either say total gross pay equals total gross pay plus the gross pay or oh, hold on or this is a shortcut plus equals gross pay those two lines that you see right there are doing exactly the same thing you can tell which one involves less typing these these two lines are the same those two. So since the second one involves less typing, I'm going to use that one. Okay. So now, now, believe it or not, we're pretty close to done. We are. But we got to print all that stuff out now. Okay. So we want to print out guy's first name or gal's first name, last name, hours worked, hourly rate, and gross pay. Are you with me? All right. So that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to put a big alert in here, alert, first name, uh, last name. <clears throat> Hours worked.
hourly rate. It's a little bigger, but that's still fine. Oops, what happened there? I don't know. Gross pay. Now, I just want to see if this works. Did you hear me? So all I want to do is see if this works. So I'm going to try running it. So I'm going back to my HTML file here, and I'm going to try to run it. I mean, the chances of me not having made a mistake are not good. Main is not defined. Yeah, and on input element on click. Why I keep getting that stupid error. All right. What I do. So, function main. That looks okay. program two three payroll zero two dash zero three dot js payroll zero two dash zero three dot js I've no idea why that wouldn't work run Oh, you know why it didn't work? Look, look on the screen. I've got to tell it. This is the same thing we had with it lives in the JS folder, right? So let's see if that made it a little better. Max hours has already been declared. Line 94. That's, look at that. I should have said max rate. Maybe you made the mistake I did. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. That's not bad. All right. Okay. Jeff Scott, 40 hours, 12.50 an hour. Well, now it doesn't like something. So let's. The good news is it took all those inputs. Look at that. I spelled something wrong in line 144. See that? You had said that before. So I forgot the Y in there. So let's look for it. Line 144. There it is. So let's run it again. Looks like it works. Okay. Now, I don't have, now notice it's just asking me to do it again because I didn't put my check in yet. So I'm going to put in here and she worked 50 hours at $10 an hour. She's got her overtime. See that? So it appears to be working. That's good news. So there's just a couple more things we got to do, and we're done. All right. First thing is we've got all that information now about our employees. That's good. That's exactly what we wanted. But what we don't have, we're not asking the person if they want to run the program again. You with me? We're not asking them that yet. So after this alert, we're going to have to ask them that. So keep going. No, that's not. 
um, again equals prompt run program again yes or no and we'll say we think they probably want to run it again so we're going to put that in there hit enter a couple times here and again equals again dot char at zero dot two upper case now I can say if again is not equal to y we're done so keep going equal false we're not done yet but we're done with the loop literally we have two more lines then we're taking a break all right What I want you to get out of this, look on lines one, seven, look at these five lines here. This is going to bring up a prompt box. This is going to bring up a prompt box right here. And that prompt box is going to say, run program again. Yes, no, and down here it'll say, Yes. Does that make sense? All right. That's what this is saying. This next line, line 179, this one right there, that says, what if I type in yes? That one says, grab just the first character and make it uppercase. Just grab the first character and make it uppercase. Then check. And if it's not Y, I don't want to keep going. And if you would, just look on the screen for a second. Just stop typing. I just want you to realize. These two things, this and this, see those? This one means we're out of the while. So in other words, we're done entering employee information. Does that make sense? All right. This one means we're done with the program. Now that we, we're not, we have one more alert to put in here. Alert, total number of employees plus tote employees plus total payroll all employees Right. plus tote gross pay. I'll do a dot two fixed on that to two decimal places. That's it. That's a lot to type. I'm not saying it's not. But if you can understand that, that was harder than the first test you took, than either problem on the first test. So, I want to make sure it's not broken. I'll come right back to it. I want to run it one more time. All of us now work for that company. So, oops, we all work for that company. So, I'm first. I work 40 hours. I make 10 bucks or 12, 15 an hour. So I made 500 bucks. All right. Well, yeah, we want to run it again. Now we've got Maya. All right. And we're going to do some out-of-range stuff on purpose to make sure those those work. Hours worked invalid. Hours worked invalid. That's good. Hours 
Hours worked invalid. Hours worked invalid. That all worked. Good. She worked 50 hours. Now let's check for pay. We'll leave it blank. Invalid. We'll put non-numeric. Invalid. We'll put in negative 9. Invalid. We'll put in 1111. Invalid. Good. So she makes $10 an hour. And she got her overtime. Instead of 500 bucks, it was 550. All right, one more. Now we got Keegan. And let's say that Keegan works a lot of hours, but unfortunately he doesn't make a lot of money per hour. So he got his overtime. So think about this. We had three employees, right? And 1000 for you, 800 or whatever it was for you, and or 550 for you, and 400 for me. So 1000 adding yours, 1550 adding mine. I think I made 500 with my overtime. So like 2050. So it should say now, I'm going to say we don't want to run it again. Should say three employees, $2,050. Does that make sense? There it is. Now we can go back and add dollar signs. I'm taking it you can do that on your own. All right. Does yours work? All right. And you're catching up, which is fine. So it is 9.06. Let's take a break. All right, so let's take a break and let's come back at 920, please.